Hi guys, welcome back to another Play Basic blog. Today is the 28th of September 2021. In the last video I put out, I mentioned uh, our situation was changing. So before we get to that though, we'll get to the important business um, that's happened in recent weeks and that's there is a new release. There are two of them actually. Uh, there are two of them because I made a mistake. Yeah, it happens. Okay, so this first edition here, the C2, uh, which is built in July, has all of the updated compiler, etc., runtimes, and but it has a, the wrong version of the help files in it. So if you download this version here, you get the Runtime compiler are updated, but all the helps out of date. <laughs> so I had to release this version here, which is all it's the same package but with the help updated to the correct files. That's all it is. There is a beta uh, of C3 pretty much to correct some another problem that was discovered with another, another function. So I'll leave that open for a little while. If other things are noticed in the, in the shorter term, we'll We'll patch them up and get them out there and put the C5, the 165 series to bed. Let's check out some other stuff on the forums. As for what's fixed in C5, um, oh sorry, 165 C2, there's a fair bit of changes that were made to it. Mostly it was about uh, catching bugs not adding anything to it really just catching bugs making sure everything's hooked up and working here for example there was a time when undim wasn't hooked up correctly so if you had undim an array it just wouldn't do the deletion useful yeah so and that went on for quite a while actually the the testing for c2 is probably across the whole year but it just comes down to if people are testing it or not and in general people aren't testing it you know so the bugs are caught you know occasionally rather than then uh, within a quick release of each of each update just the way things go you know so c2 sorry 165c the, the original build was released in 2018 so uh, C2 is a collection of all of the things, the faults that were found since 2018. So, a fair few of them. And there's still some stuff that's missing from it from the classic 164 series. And that's, I've gone into this stuff as no, ad nauseum, so I won't touch that today. I'll do with our updates. What have the users been doing? I know that um, Scott was doing some stuff with the Wolfenstein thing. Uh, I don't know, it's called Infinite Detail. I thought there was some screenshots in this, but there's not. Oh, there it is. About doing a 3D scene type type thing and occlusion came up, so I mentioned a, a demo I'd written years ago in, uh, in Dark Basic and St Steve's bought it to play Basic. Well done. <clears throat> That visibility demo was the basis of um, of Chorus 2. Chorus 2 was a was meant to be a robot AI challenge kind of thing, battle with bots thing with the 3D maze. Um, by the time we got to the point where all the components were put together, it just it ran so poorly. That we had to bend every rule in the book to get it up to speed, and it just was, it was put in the too hard basket. And, but the interesting thing about that is that that scripting language became Play Basic. It's not exactly the same, but pretty much mm, most of the same rules as PBA. Got subroutines, etc. Swap and ink and those things around it. Go sub. 
and you've got function, got some simple um, drawing commands in there as well. So, a bit of history for you. Uh, the demo here that Steve's looking at is a, it's basically a Wolfenstein uh, environment. So all of the wall fragments, all the cubes were all the same height so that that means that you can just go if I work out what <clears throat> from, from each grid point what blocks I can see and just store a list of what blocks I can see I can rather than actually try and view or render all of the cubes at once every frame I can just view the ones in front of the camera that's what it did so I went through and pre-computed uh, what it could see with a bit of a hodgepodge you know, kind of ray intersection sort of bit of code. I just made a bunch of assumptions and went, oh, well, if it's like this, then you can't, you can see this or, or that or whatever. And uh, this is Steve's port of it uh, to PBs. In the purple, it's showing the portal from the, the camera's perspective here. Uh, showing what things are, are visible from this location, but, and then you would cull it into in front of the camera. So. You, get, you end up with a short list of things that you can see and then you're culling them out to get rid of them. You probably could store those those data sets, you know, from the nearest objects out to the furthest objects from where you are. And it will give you benefits for doing things like collision or something like that as well. So it's kind of a cheap way of doing that. I think really what you could have done is do this scan while you were running and then keep that data as you're running. So rather than have, a, have to run through and pre-compute all of the visibility data. Trouble finding my source code. Okay, Scott was looking for old examples. I think I might have some of these. Um, I don't know what computer they would be on. It depends on when they're posted, for example. If they're posted, pre-2016 that would be on my desktop or one of the desktop systems which is not this computer it's my laptop uh, if I download them some of those things when people there stored things on external sites I tended not to download them if I, if I had to sign up to something to go get something I just went no nah, not going to do it and those are there I think I probably didn't grab them so they might be lost for the, for the ages. All right, it's probably the, sh the long and the short of that. Um, the other conversations were about the server upgrade stuff. Uh, the forum's still running, as you can see. Uh, we've really just got errors suppressed and for the time being, it's not a long-term solution, but it's a solution for for now. I do have a secondary port of the forum in a newer version of the uh, forum software, SMF, which will, this video here goes goes into that conversation there. So if you want to learn more about that, check out this this one here within the what's the thread called? I'll link it below anyway. Yeah, server up going coming what to do with the sites. All right. <clears throat> In that previous video where I talk about um, the Plat Basic Live video, I was mentioning that my situation has changed and uh, you might realize that I've been a carer for the last five years. Over five years, actually. Um, and that, that has ended now. Uh, the person I was caring for has gone into a permanent facility, uh, which means that that job is is over. You know, you, you kind of have mixed feelings about this kind of stuff because you, you're going, well, as hard as what it was getting, it's still a routine that you understand. You know, it's still um, something that you, you're kind of comfortable doing. Um, and now it's kind of gone and trying to pick up my routine as it was before is very difficult. And in fact, I'm not quite sure what direction 
I'll be heading off in. Uh, for the shorter term, I'll still be living at the same place and doing a lot of the same stuff I did before, which is, you know, maintenance of the property. It's a bigger property, so it needs to be maintained. Where does that leave Play Basic? Where does that leave Underwear Design? And all of those aspirations? Well, I don't really know at this point. Um, but I don't want them to end. But we are switching back into a situation where I didn't need the income beforehand. And if this is to continue, it has to become slightly more has to generate a better return than what it does. It's an ugly conversation. I don't like putting it out there. How you do that? Well, you know, you get effects built. <laughs> That'd be nice. Or, you know, you build tools yourself and, and try and fill in some of the gaps that you've been thinking about for quite a while that are outside of the spectrum of Play Basic. I guess, you know, if we are to push ahead with Play Basic and our, the trend that was were occurring before a couple of months ago and the forum problem kicked up, uh, things have a terrible habit of happening in the middle of something else and you kind of stop and that train of thought is broken and that line is broken. Picking it up again and that motivation to pick it up when there's not really any sort of you're not fulfilling a, a direct need, it's more of an indirect need down the line, you know. It's difficult, you know, it's difficult when you go, well, people gonna people gonna buy this because this runs five clock cycles cycles faster than it did before. I mean the answer is no, they won't. You know. So coming back and, you know, <clears throat> You've got to make big decisions about what's in the product, how the product is done, how the product is monetized. It's an ugly conversation, you know. I'm not a big fan of this Patreon kind of model that's kind of come out of nowhere in recent years. Um, I don't want to have a GoFundMe kind of thing. I think that would fail miserably. You know, we don't have a big enough following to generate any interest to build that, you know what I mean? Like, we would have to put in a lot of a lot of legwork up front to get people excited by that, and why would they be? I mean, why would people be excited when there's a gazillion other options out there for free? I just don't see, I don't see a smart play being to try and compete in the same in the same fields that have already been done a hundred times. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. If you're talking about video games, for example, if you're the tenth Space Invader clone, no one cares. You would have to reinvent that game in such a way uh, that recaptivates people who are sick of the original, you know. And in programming, that's kind of what we have to keep doing. We have to keep reinventing the wheel and selling you the same product with a glossy, shiny veneer on the front of it. And you see companies do this all the time. Every you know two years, there's a new version of the product comes out, and you're buying it. You know, as much as I I don't like that model, um, I don't like the Patreon model. I don't like signing people up, locking people up into these kind of things. There's a part of me that goes, well, you're going to have to. There's no other way to build this apart from having, you know, getting a grant from somewhere, which is, I've been looking into this already, um, or trying to make ads work. <laughs> and ads don't generate a lot of revenue for a small site. Nothing that you can live off. Well, let's put it, put it bluntly. You can't live off the sales of you know a couple of copies a month. That's not going to work. You need to be selling, you know, as gross as what this sounds. You need to be selling somewhere in the vicinity to to cover probably a minimum of two thousand bucks a month. Um, 
just to cover yeah your own personal expenses like it like your food bill let alone your internet and electricity bill you know you can't maintain that forever you can't be expected to to live off baked beans forever it's just not the way this thing goes um I don't want to put the financial mocks, you know. There's a way forward. We'll find a way forward. Uh, if it becomes a completely hobby project and stays a completely hobby project, I should say, then clearly it's not going to get the attention that that you might be hoping for it to get. I mean, the, the reliance upon people to write things in it and do things with it and experiment have fun you know it's up to you like I was just kicking around before looking at some stuff that was on here and I was just ran to the syntax highlight example so this is from 2014 and it's written as a lark pretty much but it does actually syntax highlight PB code if I run the example you don't see it on screen by the way run it forty four milliseconds and I had this open before tools syntax highlight HTML test there you have it just dumps out a, a bit of HTML syntax highlight PB code my point of that really is is that you know you can do stuff in PV that you might not be expecting and this is what you know when I look back at my own examples this folder in here where's that gone sorry I'm babbling a bit this is just a folder of my bits and pieces uh, I think it's mostly stuff I wrote but there's probably a few bits and pieces in here that, that are written by other people Yeah, it's all kinds of weird stuff. Where's the games folder? There it is. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of stuff. Anyway, sorry for getting off the track there. Getting off the beaten track. Uh, the ugly conversation we're having really is about the viability of this kind of tool. Now... What, one, what I mean is that um, if we have a tool that just does Windows, right? If PB is just just on Windows, that's all fine. Which is where we're at now, is it? Uh, in a world where there's lots of competition for the same space, there's lots of languages these days, you can use lots of you know uh, high-end languages really with different libraries to do much the same stuff syntactically it's different you know okay language is different okay but the basic the end result is you get something that's the same but those things tend to be you know produced by large corporations or they're owned by large groups etc uh, and they're multi-platform you know, the multi-platform thing is you know it's a big undertaking or platforms you support you know Windows and Mac of course you know Linux in this day and age that's that whole that whole conversation that's been been beating ourselves over the head with for the last couple of years probably last five years really about where we need to be but we can't get there we can't get there because there's lots of steps and lots of big things that need to be done in order to, to break legacy from where we are to where that is. And if we break this point here to that, do we say to people, hey, come and buy my product again? Now, I hate that. I don't like that model. I never liked it. It's frustrating for people. Like, I, I, we, have a, we have our own frustrations built into the way we do, we do things, is that you're given, when you make a purchase, you buy the base retail installer. Now, you, we, never, we never give you that file again. You, you download it once, it's your responsibility, you take care of it yourself. 
because I never wanted to store people's personal data on the website. Because you can see it's coming a mile away, but eventually there was going to be uh, the the minefield that is personal data and collecting personal data was going to open up online. It's taken it's taken longer than I thought it would, but it, it's well and truly here now. You know, do I do we you know do we keep people's personal data on the website? Uh, I think that's still a bad idea. Uh, do we keep some of that data on the website? Some of it you have to go through and make a you know ask the admin to get something for you fair enough that's probably something you can do but you need to have you know to have an upgrade strategy to have this kind of stuff laid out ahead of time it's a lot of working components that need to be built up to make this thing functional you know if you have a product that's one thing but to interface with a customer base as they get bigger it's complicated, it's, it's slow and tedious. You, know, you need people to do this stuff for you. Uh, I was swamped, you know, back in the 10 years ago when DTAB was going gangbusters there for a long time. I found, <clears throat> I was finding myself uh, doing handmade keys for people more often than I was doing anything else. When I sat in front of the computer, I was just doing that, emailing them back. So eventually I went, well, this is getting crazy, so I better write some software to fix this problem. And I wrote another package to fix the problems I had with the fix I'd, I'd written before, you know. It got to a point where I could just grab the order and put it into the processing program and it would spit out everything it needed and email the, the customer back in one hit. That was fantastic, but by the time I got to that point, the rush was over. You know, it, was, it wasn't saving as much time as what it could have, you know. You know, so this, this thing about getting big that people are constantly talking about, you know, we want PB to be a big uh, customer base, we want PB to have a, a big presence. Well, that requires, you know, the product be improved, yep. I happily accept that. That's that's. I can. I'm a big boy. I can have. I can happily cop that on the chin. As I said before, there's lots of things about PV I don't like. And if I put, if I made it the way I wanted to make it originally, you probably wouldn't like it either, because it would be different, very different from what it is today. But it's the way things go. Yeah, growing and making it bigger makes it financially viable. If you have a regular, you know, if you're going back to the the um, the barrel every couple of years, or probably every year, and you can see, you know, people, this frustrates people in this in this scene because they're going, I won't mention names of products, but these products do, you probably know the ones I'm talking about. Uh, some of our competitors, they were getting to a point where they would they would have a product out for 12 months and then announce a new language and uh, sell the same product or rough or very similar version of it to the same customers pretty much. And because they were fans of the product, they would they would be endorsing that, that model. That works for a while and then you sort of have to kind of break free of it. I don't like the idea of, you know, of Patreon kind of models where people get access to stuff before others. I've always liked the idea of putting the stuff up on the, like you mightn't realize it, but when we put betas up, they are literally, my build of the product, that, you know, probably an hour beforehand. That's how fresh they are. Um, with Patreon, of course, you'd be, you'd be holding that stuff in the community and going, hey, you've got to pay to get this stuff now. And then if you start asking people for money for this, this is what happened with another competitor's forum. They had this, um, this private developer network when they were, they were moving from one version of their product to the next, right? And in the meantime, they knew they were going to have no revenue. Nothing was coming in. So I sold people on the idea of, hey, uh, you can pay a subscription, 30 bucks a month, uh, and you can be a part of the development of this new product. This is what they were selling customers on. So, okay, we, you buy into this and 
and maybe 50 other people buy into it as well. It's a, it's a small uh, subset of the larger community. And uh, the onus was really on that you would get hands-on fresh beaters to, to play with every day or every couple of days. And you'd have your, your have communications with the developers, get all that kind of stuff rolling. Uh, it was absolute garbage, never happened. It, it certainly felt what was advertised, you weren't quite getting that thing. And by the time the product was ready to ship to the public, they were so concerned about getting their pre-announced feature set. The version they shipped on CD is broken. You have to, have to install a patch for it to even install. Uh, being involved in that turned me off subscription models completely. I never wanted to be a part of that. Because I just know that you can't maintain that. You can't. It's impossible to, for me to produce enough interesting content for you on a regular basis to be engaged by that, to, to warrant you paying five bucks a month or whatever it would be, two bucks a month or something. It's crazy. Um, so the subscription model I'm not, not a big fan of. I don't like going back to the the yearly subscription model, but I, I can see there would almost have to be something like that. And you know, a lot of these products are quite expensive. If you've gone through and you've bought the base product, you bought the extension pack, they're going to going to offer you as well, and some art packages, etc., and some some secondary tool that goes with it. You know. Before you know it, you spend hundreds of dollars on this on a hobby that you're not really doing much with, and that frightens me. You know, it frightens me in a world where anyone with half a brain, let's face it, can can do a bit of a Google and go find a free a free two D cr game creation tool. The question is always going to be: is, I mean, how do you make this make a return? I'm, a, I'm notoriously uh, a negative Nancy with all of this kind of stuff. I tend to th think on the on the terms of you, you just can't. And in recent years, we've seen products with very large communities close down. Um, I can understand why they have, because really it's, you know, even we've been in a short, uh, uh, sorry, a smaller uh, ecosystem than the, compared to these other ones, the conversations you have with people, they, they drag on you after a while. You get the same questions coming through that have been answered a hundred times beforehand. You know, why does it work like this? Why is it blah, blah, blah? Why isn't it the same as this? You know, it's like because it's a different thing. Or we have to make a choice and implement this over this. We can't do both. We had the same problem with trying to build the PVFX builds. I mean, if you remember, like I've, I haven't talked much about this, I guess, in recent years, but, but you know, 10 years ago, we were, we were putting out PVFX builds that were 165, 166, up to 1.8 or whatever it was. They have an entire new runtime, a entire new back end. It's a whole different, different animal underneath it, but the same idea. So it doesn't feel any different, really. But there are differences, you notice, when you try and compile different different programs. And even though we have these new features, hardware acceleration, 3D, blah, 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 people were just not interested. They weren't engaged with the conversation because we can't put out, can't make compelling um, a compelling argument to, for why you shouldn't use this over something else. Because there is no compelling argument, you know. Once you get to hardware acceleration, let's face it, they're all the same. If, you, if I'm using the same API as you, guess what? We have the same features. whoop de doo Who cares? It comes down to how we implement these things, what kind of clever, clever st stuff we can wedge in the back of it, you know. Getting back to sort of that conversation with communities, I mean... If you ask one person to write down their, their top three things they need in a product and you multiply that by a thousand, you get 3,000 different things. You don't get a clear vision of what 
of one thing because everyone has a very distinct different need for what they what they intend on doing if, if I'm going to use PB to make to make to make um, to write a syntax highlighter like we just were looking at before that I need certain kinds of string functions or that or that sort of behaviors I don't need things for drawing sprites they're not relevant to what I'm doing you know and that's as you as you have these conversations with people, that's what you would notice is that, that this person here is walking down this road, but we're walking down here. They want us to shift to be this. Um, the whole thing with effects was really just a, a, a very sour moment. Really, we, we couldn't get people to download the betas. Like we, they wouldn't download the updates. In all seriousness, the, the, some of those debaters would get downloaded twice, and, and one of those was, was by me. Probably empty as well, you know. So, no one even looked at them. They were different, and they were more difficult to use, I guess. And they, in some ways, they were more lower level. And that's what, what I wanted this to be. I wanted it to be a bit lower level than what it's been in the past. So we can strip back some of the high level functions and, and have those included. As libraries, they can still be there. We just got to pull them in as libraries, and and uh, that's how you get old programs to work. Maybe they would work out of the box. Maybe they would work with a bit of coercion, you know, uh, making them, you know, bending them in, into place. But is that something that, that you people would even, uh, you know, put their hand in their pocket to buy? I mean, I, I don't believe it is. All those kind of things, I feel uncomfortable selling people because I have no intention of supporting it. You know, once you, the moment you start selling something to someone, they want you to support it for the rest of your life. I have people coming up to me, you know, it's almost 20 years PB has been on the market for. I think it was 2002 it started to be a product or an idea. Probably went on sale about 2004 somewhere in there I forget now you can get people go I lost my cereal <laughs> you go okay alright fair enough what's what's your name and details well you know I've forgotten so you have, you know, you're bouncing through a conversation of five emails with someone and then you go okay I've got basic details about what you fill in when you made the purchase, just give me some of that basic detail and I'll send you a new key, etc. You know. And they crack the shits with you, and it's like, well, I can't just give out your key to anyone, right? If I gave your key to anyone else and then they shipped that round all over the place like some people did in the past, you know. It's it's a huge slap in the face of some some of your biggest critics in, in this in this space. Like going back to the forum, for example. I think over the time the forums run, which is probably you know probably fifteen years, let's say. I think we've banned about you know ten people, um, and those ten people were they were worthy of banning. Let's put it this way: they they, they were the kind of toxic people that you just don't need in your community um, that's another reason why I, I I can see why developers in this situation are over this concept they, they don't want to have a support forum because the, the toxic attitude of certain people because you know, there's nothing to reward good behaviour I can see some ideas that I would think would fit well into this kind of category that would would be incentives for people to produce more things. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. I mean, I was given uh, a bunch of products for for writing examples in a, uh, another language years ago, given access to a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, because I was prolific. And that was beneficial. They saw that that was a beneficial thing, and I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, I, I can see people in the community that I would like to reward, but I, 
Beyond giving them a free version of PB, which they've already paid for, it's hard to work out a way to reward them. You know, beyond you know some trinkety kind of oh, well, here's a badge for you. you know, that's it's not good enough, really. I mean, if people are going to spend their time and effort uh, producing software uh, in your language, right, for your platform, with, which is pr a promotion of what you're you're doing helping to bring other people in, then they should be rewarded, you know? So our, I guess our key points today, our key points that we need to, to start to really rattle around our head about, um, that we need to think more carefully about what this is going to be, um, what, kind of, what kind of model we want to have in the future about, uh, if you want a purely free model, which I don't actually have a disagreement with, people would, would argue that I do, but I actually don't. Um, I was able, to, like for example, I was able to write a bunch of examples in, in another product because they had a free version and I used the free version and it was pretty much all there except for a couple of functions. Um, and that's what our learning edition does. It's it's all there except it's just an older version, you know. Um, it'd be better to have those things updated, etc. You know, you can have sponsored by different things, but that means bringing advertising into this thing. I don't like the idea of that. You don't really know who you're getting into bed with if you do advertising. Uh, and even advertising for a small site for a small product base is not very lucrative. You know, we've, we've had people approach me in the past about about bundling their uh, my products into their installers, you know, to so they could pretty much shoehorn some other crap onto your system. And I'm like, no, you know, and you're selling yourself out in, in terms of your whatever integrity you think you have, you know. For me, it's probably not much. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so this this monetization problem is ugly. I don't I don't like it. In order for this to keep going longer term, we have to structure this in such a way that it can pay for itself, it can cover itself, and there be an incentive to produce better and bigger and better better things other than it's fun to do on the weekends, you know. But in saying that, there should be an incentive for people to, to use the product as well. I think, I think it's actually something that's really not done very well, is that, we, that some of that revenue coming in should be shared with the people, the user base. We've done it in the past with competitions, for example. We've had these, these competitions. Um, can I think what this, this one here is, actually? Oh, there you go. So, yeah, unfortunately, there was only one person that we, who entered this competition here, and they got some free money. When was that? What year was that? 2010. So, there you go. Again, 10 years ago. So, we haven't done those things for 10 years. We haven't run newsletters for 10 years. For all the same reasons, it's very it's time consuming to build a newsletter, to make it compelling enough. It's time consuming to make videos like this, you know. To make an hour long video takes a lot of just simple editing to put it together and upload the damn thing and spread it around for, for you know, for no one to watch it. And then people go, oh geez, you never, you, you never communicate with your customers. Well, actually I do. There's a whole bank of these things on YouTube. Go and look them up. Uh, yeah gets frustrating you know, I mean before I mentioned frustrations about you know about the forums for example um, it's a very it's not even one percent you know I mean you have you have there's a trolling behavior of certain people and back in those days it was people who were badgering you for getting free versions free versions for producing you know I wrote five lines of code hey where's my free version you know and then when they when they were given something for free, basically, they went and took that and shared the cereal around with other people, etc. You know, 
and they wonder why they get banned. So it's kind of toxic behaviour. And that stuff, I can, I can really... I just, I don't have the patience for that shit anymore. Pretty much all the coding forums I've seen in recent years are just ghost towns. They're all dead because they're, you know, you've got uh, new people can't come into them because they're, 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 they feel like they're being knocked at by experienced people. You know, I'm sure that's what people feel like when I fight post on someone's thread, you know. Positive. I'm not, I'm not, you know, if I, if I grab your code and make a snippet of it and go, well, hey, you should do it like this. I'm not doing it to make you feel bad. I'm going, hey, let's just give you a better result so you can get on and get something else done. That's where I'm, that's where I'm coming from. I don't give a flying stuff if you use it, right? I don't care. But the point is, is to enter that conversation bounce those ideas around bounce them backwards and forwards you know you might have different you might get an idea from what I'm doing or what I'm suggesting and go oh gee I can go just this other thing like that and make that work better or something Uh, nonetheless anyway so today's blog's really about my position has changed I'm no longer a carer moving forward what do we do with play by answer can we make it pay its own way should we even bother to do that I you know I'm a little bit in all of those camps, to be honest. There's part of me that wants to do that, part of me that doesn't want to do it at all, part of me that thinks that, you, you know, with the right kind of model, this can work really, really well. It could grow much better than what it will, you know, as we're doing it here. Because basically, if we go ahead and we add uh, an up-to-date graphics API, for example, um, get our compiler stuff updated, you know, then we need people to pick up the mantle in and start hammering out software in it. Because without that, nothing will change. It's the same conversation we'll be having in six months' time, 12 months' time, two years' time. It'll be the same re- repetitive stuff that we've been having for the last bunch of years, you know. So I guess I'm trying to... Trying to pre-warn people that hey this may not become this might become bumpier in the future you might be uh might not get as many freebies up front maybe maybe we might have to go to a patreon model and do some of that stuff for a select few and then you know that creates that them and that them and us kind of attitude which i don't like People get resentful of that. And why is this person getting let in? Blah blah. Why do they get this special treatment, etc.? You know, that kind of nonsense. Try it. It'll do your head in. Um, you know, moving forward, you know, it's the same conversations repeating themselves. How do you how do you make this thing cater to everyone? I got my gut feelings is that I, I would like to do retro platforms. Uh, a lot more than I care about phones. In other words, you need a, a development budget and a, a decent sized marketing budget to even contemplate being in this space. Relying upon being found and being free and being some, somehow shared around amongst friends today, I think, is crazy town. Um, it can work, of course. We all know examples where it's worked well for people. We know examples where, but a lot of these examples have gone to the Patreon models. That you know they're, they're being paid up front to build something, and then we know lots more of these examples where they're being paid up front to build something, and the final product either it is never del- delivered, or it's delivered stillborn, or or it's you know occasionally it's great, but um, I'd rather not be in that category if I could help it. Uh, I'd rather be maybe get a grant or something like that. Maybe have some some sort of secondary funding uh, coming in from uh, extensions, perhaps, or different add-ons, and maybe offer some financial incentives to people in the community to produce more, to share more of what they're producing, and, and do other things amongst that. Teach more people, because what we need is we need more people to know the bare basics of how to build something. And if they can, that steamrolls ahead. Um, 
wow, I should have scripted this. I didn't script it. I thought it would just, just talk off the cuff. I know I've talked, touched a lot of different bases. I'll cut this down, obviously, and uh, I guess we'll leave it there. But uh, I'll put a thing up on the put a forum thread up for us to have a conversation about this if you're interested you know and I'm expecting no one will bother post because no one's interested so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy so now you have to post ha gotcha all right thanks for listening and I'll see you soon with hopefully some more progress I'll actually get something done wow amazing man all right thanks for that say it bye